Hello and welcome to the Be Smart About Art show. I'm Susan Jo Mumford and I'm here today to present Be Smart About Art Question Time. Now over the last five weeks I have been changing some of the programming to make sense of what viewers are wanting and today for those of you already watching live I have an opportunity for you and that is what are your burning questions that you have to ask me? I'm a specialist in the art world. I'm an art market entrepreneur. I've had multiple businesses in the industry. I have mentored, consulted many, many art dealer businesses, gallerists, artists, other people, even some people with slightly different enterprises from that. And what we're doing with the Be Smart About Art Question Time segment is we are changing the segment to not only be answering questions of our members, but actually we thought, let's ask you or let's give the, the opportunity for you ask to question your, your questions live. So what I am doing is I am moving over to the Facebook feed right now. Here we are live to pick up on your questions. So what's something that you would like to know about how you are tackling your career during the COVID crisis? Uh, what's something that you want to understand about having professional relationships in the industry? What do you want to understand when it comes to just making a career in the art world. What is something that, that crosses your mind and you think, gosh, I don't have an answer for that. Pop it into the comments underneath this live screen. So just down there. And I would love to, to see what I can do for answering your questions today. I can see we've already got a few pe people live with us today. Now in terms of just giving you a bit of insight already, um, well, I've got one rule to tell you about that I am breaking today as I'm streaming live and that is I am wearing stripes. If you don't know I do so I do loads of presentations online I have for years and something that I have been aware of is the fact that there is a rule of presenting on TV or even on the internet and that is that you don't wear say stripey things because it can kind of visually be a bit jarring and I thought you know what this top has only got three stripes. So I'm gonna be daring and I'm gonna see how it goes. If you think it looks really funky, please go ahead and comment about that as well. And that's something useful for you to know. Another point is that I couldn't wear, say a green top. I, I'm wearing a brown top obviously today in combination with what is actually a big sheet of green cloth behind me. And it turns out the number of speakers who are using green cloths at the moment have got the kind that you have to iron. This one, I bought a few years ago at my favorite photography supplier, that's B&H Photograph in New York City. It had been crumpled up over in the corner of the office. It even moved to a different home office with me. And this one's an iron-free, you just put it up. So literally, the wall behind me, thinking about how we are changing our environments, including the environments of our homes to enable us to be working, if we weren't working in those environments already, or like myself, even if you were already working from home, we're still having to shift things around to make room for the new today. So this area where I'm sitting right now, used to have a piece of furniture right here, there used to be something over there, and now this is not only an office, it's an office and it's a studio. I'm continually making adjustments to, to what I'm doing in this space. And I'm really interested in understanding from you what it is that you have been changing in your world as well to make adjustments for this current point in time. Now, just still inviting questions. If anybody's got questions about your art career, please throw them at me. I'm at the moment thinking about how I can be throwing in some tips about presenting on the screen because this is something that you really do need to know at this point in time. This is connecting virtually. I was actually I just came out of a conversation. I point over there because that's where the office is. The office. It's the office half the room over there. So I just came out of a call. I was seated at my iMac and I was conversing with gallery owners who live in different countries and, and we were talking about what's the reality for 2020 are there actually gonna be art fairs taking place this year? Uh, there's one, I know that there's one particular art fair brand at the moment that's reaching out to its exhibitors and saying, yes, of course, the autumn edition or the fall edition is going ahead. So please go ahead and sign up now. And the reality is you go, really? Is anybody actually going to be wanting to go to an art fair anytime soon before we have a vaccine? And there's an, there was another person in the same call that was saying, but this other art fair keeps on delaying 
the application deadline and is going, listen, we are just being totally realistic about it. And they're being what sounds to be a, a good ethically centered enterprise. And that's, I think, what we really want. One of the things we really want to be thinking about at the moment is being sensitive to different people being in different situations and how you run your day-to-day -day life in your enterprise that you are being sensitive to different people and being in different scenarios. So for example, with the Be Smart About Art show, are we funded by our membership program and our one-to-one -one program? We absolutely are. Do you have to take part in that in order to access the show? No, you absolutely do not. And you know, that is a prime example of a value decision, value-based decision that we have taken as a business, we've gotten, we want this show to be freely available to anybody who wants to watch it. So think about how you can have some messaging like that yourself. So maybe you're going to go onto Instagram live and do, do some speaking on there. How can you invite people to support your work while also making it very clear that you're happy to also be there to provide creative insight, to show the beauty of your studio, your gallery space, to give tips on collecting art or give tips on caring for art or whatever kind of tips or insight that you might be able to give as a professional. This is a great time, this whole period of time to establish yourself as an authority. What is it that means that people are going to go to you because you have special understanding, you have a, a very specific appreciation of a type of art, of some engagement with art, of some type of particular activity to do with art, there's going to be, there are going to be various things I imagine that you specifically do. And that's something that you can be communicating to people during this time. Now, what else can you think about when it comes to say presenting as well? Now, what I am doing at the moment, not everyone loves doing, which is that I am not only presenting to you via Zoom that is then streamed to Facebook. That's actually, it's a free feature on the professional version of Zoom. I'm not quite sure about the free version of Zoom. If you, you can still live stream to Facebook. If anyone has that answer, please do put that in the comments box. But the thing that a lot of people don't like doing is interacting, say, with comments when they're streaming live. So if you need to think, if you're going to be doing some streaming yourself, think about this, because if you don't want to be presenting, and that was perfectly timed, thank you very much. So one of our members has just put in a question into the comments box and she didn't realize that's right when I was delivering this point. So, ta. Uh, so some people wouldn't like to do that. Whereas I, I love that engagement. And, and whereas I don't expect this to replace the face-to-face -face interaction, I appreciate this fully valid form of interaction with other human beings. And so I love it when I see somebody who I personally know, uh, Right, and I don't have to personally know you to kind of get excited as well and have that sense of engagement. But somebody's typing in, I go, oh, great, let's, let's, let's have an interaction. So let me read to you what she has said. Um, she's asking, I'm interested to know, good question, what kind of headset you're using and is it necessary? Okay, so I was thinking about addressing sound. The reason I am wearing a headset, I don't plan on wearing a headset in the long term on the Be Smart About Art show. I mean, what I have got set up around me right right now I have done bit by bit by bit by bit by bit every single day literally I have added a little bit by bit by bit so I now have for all the ladies or individuals who like to wear lipstick and powder is a good idea for not having shine when you're online if you particularly if you've got a light on you like I do I've got lipstick and powder over there and a little mirror so I just add and add and add and add I took a decision to make certain that the sound quality was going to be excellent. Now that's providing that my Sennheiser, so that's a great brand. This, these are actually gonna be older headphones, but they're, but they're good quality. So you can easily find, I don't know the availability right now, so much has been purchased, but I imagine that we'll begin to start seeing more stock of it being available again soon, because as was being discussed in the call with gallerists only just a few minutes ago, this is the world we're looking at for 2020, 2020, we think. So we're going to see kind of a new normal really seriously emerging. I know even a small business here at Lewis and East Sussex is reopening. It's a food-based business. They never had to close. They did. They thought the lockdown was temporary. They've now gone, you know what? We need to keep, keep operating and do it in a new and different way. What I did is I went, right, I've got this reliable headset, my Sennheiser headset, 
in which I think the sound quality is excellent. In fact, with a, a meeting of speakers, and I have a weekly meeting with them, it's about 25 of us every time. I've had people comment, wow, Susan, your sound is lovely. To hear that from speakers makes me go, right, I took the right decision. So uh, what I decided to do just to simply get going was to wear the headset. And when I get to the point that the office and that the studio is sorted out enough and I've got all of the programming going, in a way that I actually can find some extra chunks of time. I'm gonna be testing out some other mics that I've got. So I actually do have other solutions that wouldn't be on my head. I've got a nice professional mic that I could probably get connected. We've also got, for example, and one of the next things we're doing is I think setting up a professional video camera. So connecting that just next to the laptop. So I'm currently streaming on the laptop. The camera is not as high quality on the, on the laptop, the one that's built in to this MacBook Air. So the plan is that we, connect the camera, and then it's gonna be a nice higher quality image. But what we're doing is we're going, right, what can we prioritize bit by bit? And you know what? I'm happy wearing a headset right now because I know that it gives you good sound quality. And actually the sound quality, and this is crazy to say this as somebody who's a trained photographer and who almost made a career as a photographer and who's been in the art world for almost 20 years, sound is arguably the most important thing when it comes to streaming live and doing something like what we're doing now. Now, needless to say, if you are showing people images of works of art, you need to have a nice clear image as well. But people hearing you is what's going to keep people engaged. So take that away. And I think also really bear in mind what I've just been saying about get going, have things that are good quality, you know that you can up the game as time goes. And so soon, I hope that the video quality is going to be even better. But if that doesn't work, that's fine. And I've got a secondary point on that as well, which is that I have had a rule throughout this thing, which is that all of the things that are here, I don't bring in anything that's temporary into the studio setup. The only thing that I'm moving back and forth is interestingly, the headphones. And, and I thought that's okay because I can easily swap between the computer and this compu that, the, the, the desktop and the, and the laptop. But say my other half, Chris, has offered loaning me a couple of things. And I've just said, you know what? Nope. It's, I really appreciate you offering those things. I want to be able to come in and just turn this on, turn that on, turn that on, sit down and go. And what I suggest you do, particularly in the earlier days of, of doing, if you are thinking about live streaming or teaching any classes or anything, create yourself a checklist, seriously, and you just add to it as you go. And I'm not kidding, you do this. You could even use, you know, I've got my white, my little mobile whiteboards that I've always got next to me in case I want to use them. You could use something like that, whatever, whatever is handy, but just write down exactly what it is, you, every single step that you need to take to make certain that you're able to do your live stream or do whatever it is that, that you're doing. Because particularly if you're not doing this every day or if you're not doing it professionally, it does get a bit complicated to remember what exactly you need to do. But actually, once you work it out, just if you write yourself a cheat sheet, it's remarkably easy because you've already got the reference yourself of exactly what to do. And as with so many of these things, you can go onto YouTube and see examples of how to, how to connect up systems. I mean, the answers that you need are either going to be available in your network or online, if not and or. So use use your network when you've got questions about streaming and, and going live and recording, that kind of thing as well. Because this is, based on that conversation I had with the gallerists just a few minutes ago and based on my own assessment and listening to the likes of Dr. John Campbell, who is amazing. If you haven't watched his videos yet on YouTube, I definitely would go over and check out what he he's, he's doing daily broadcasts about COVID-19 and Chris King, my other half, he mentioned John Campbell a few weeks ago when he was our guest, when, when Chris was our guest speaker. If you listen to what's a, a scientifically based person like he, what he's saying, you think, yeah, this is, this, this is our world for a while. How can you make the most of it? Look after yourself and engage with people in this way. And hey, the good news is that the galleries I was just talking with, they are selling art. They're not necessarily selling as much as they were but what I think I am seeing is that people are probably spending less money on their outgoings and business. And then you might be selling less, but you, need, you don't need to be selling as much because you don't have as much going out of the bank account. So that's really interesting how that, how that balance shifts. And there was one of the galleries who even said, hey, they had 
a good existing long-term collector. They sold one piece on one marketplace, one piece on another marketplace. And the third piece was to a collector who said, hey, I'm not spending any money. I'd like to use the extra money I've got on a work of art. Thank you very much. So do make it clear that you have got your works of art, your services, what have you available, because people are still buying. And I'm not making that up. I'm actually saying that secondhand from multiple accounts, very trustworthy as well. So it's pretty exciting what, what we're seeing actually coming through. And as you might know, we now have for our Sunday edition of the show, Green Shoots as our theme, which I just love. So it's looking at what's coming out of this world that never would have come up before. So what are some green shoots that we can see and that we can appreciate? Whether it is a loaf of sourdough bread that somebody has baked, or if it is some new video calling technology that's being developed. I mean, there, there are definite green shoots coming through. It can be challenging this world. It can be upsetting. It can be devastating. It is a changing world. And it's not going to be the same as when we first entered this period when we come out of it, whenever that is. Everyone, thank you very much as ever for coming along and joining me for the Be Smart About Art show. For our Be Smart About Art question time, I am looking forward to welcoming tomorrow to our Thursday show in which we are now focusing on it being a storytelling session. We're welcoming Deborah Henry Pollard and she is going to tell the story of her tango shoes and how that can give you some motivation. So she is really going to give you some brilliant insight there. So keep an eye out on the Facebook page on the events tab because we are listing each an individual show taking place. If you haven't yet done so, when you're watching this live, be sure to select the option in comments to get notifications whenever we do go live. It can be a few minutes after we've gone live that you get the notification, but better to jump in a few minutes into it than not at all. And we do have the replays that we also put over onto our YouTube channel. Be sure to check out the community at patreon.com forward slash be smart about art. That is also where we are building an international community. And one of the things we do each week is we have a member masterclass. So go check it out. And I look forward to seeing you again online soon. As ever, we're here participating, connecting and growing. That's a key to making it in the art world today. And we're here to help you thrive in an ever changing art world. Thank you very much as ever. Signing out from Lewis in East Sussex. Until next time.